stay home. We had to go to the opera on a work night. But I worked two areas. Besides, you couldn't make the Saturday matinee, which is why I got this one. And they don't give you a weather report when you buy the tickets. Fine. Whatever. The tickets must have cost. Oh, them. you bought dinner. Two deli sandwiches, some cokes, and a couple apples. It's not the same. It's too much for me. It's never too much. But you enjoyed it. Two and a half hours of pure bliss. Maybe for you. <laughs> Some Wagner operas are three times as long. When I heard you say The Flying Dutchman, I was picturing like the Jethro Tull song. Or like <laughs> that part of Pirates of the Caribbean. Like seven, eight minutes tops. No worse than a movie? No, but at least with a movie, you can go pee or buy some popcorn and get a Coke. You have to sit on your hands in those little red velvet chairs and you can't use yourself because it'll light up and bother somebody. Everybody's wearing outfits I couldn't afford in six months. And they even they give you a dirty look at even shifting your seat. Never mind the people, but the music. Wasn't it magnificent? A bunch of fat people singing songs in a language I couldn't understand. <laughs> well, I'm going to give you the translations on those little screens so you can follow the story. Now, I read the story in the program. I'm not stupid. I never said the Xander, the story makes no sense. It's not supposed to. It's... Opera! <laughs> Alright, so first there's this flying Dutchman who's got this curse on him. Why does he have a curse on him? I don't know. You're looking for logic. Okay, and then he's sailing the seven seas looking for some woman who will be faithful to him. And guess what? It just happens to be this total nut job. I mean, Zenta, who spends all the time fantasizing about saving this swimming, flying, rollerblading Belgian who just happens to be in the neighborhood. <laughs> it's fate. It's love. Okay, and then she breaks up with her boyfriend, Eric, who, by the way, has a cool name, but other than that, he's the only normal person in the whole opera. Which is why he's all wrong for her. And then she throws herself into the freezing Atlantic to save this guy's soul. I mean, how stupid is that? Well, don't you think it's a beautiful idea to save a soul who's in pain? Getting weird, Sandra. <laughs> it's just a fantasy. Don't you have fantasies? Yeah. Star Wars fantasies, where I would save the whole galaxy with my lightsaber. You know, when I was a kid, like normal fantasies. Well, I think it's kind of sweet. And I wanted to do something special for your birthday. Okay, yeah, and that was really nice, and I appreciate it, but we could have stayed home and order <laughs> some pizza, a few beers, pop in a few episodes of Game of Thrones, watch some heads getting chopped off with the road slash. If we have to go into the city, maybe the garden for a game. Uh, we could go to a game. We wouldn't like it. Uh, why don't you try me? I want to like what you like too, though. Xander, we've gone out there. Four or five times now, and I like you. Hey, I really, really like you, but I want this Columbia VA and theater, and I'm just this ordinary kid from Google. I can educate you. I don't want to be educated, Xander. Look, I, I'm just a sloppy chunk with no money who wants to have a little bit of fun and not get so serious and romantic all of the time. So why'd you ever go out with me? Because you were sweet. Nice, and you didn't hit on me when I was serving. <coughs> like you wrote those little funny faces on your charge slips, and plus your tip's good, so. <laughs> <laughs> I always slipped the hostess two dollars so I could put it your table. You know, she knew, so I thought it was fun to watch. Look, Xander, I was flattered when you asked me out. And here's this hot, good looking guy who, you know, and you saw something in me. Yeah. Maybe more than I see myself. Well, that sounds good. Yeah, and then last summer when we went to the, the beach, I like that. And the museum, and that Japanese flick. Tokyo's so was so boring, I wanted to gouge my own eyes. I'm one of the great. And then the ballet. I mean, the tickets alone. Not that's the fortune. Not that much. It's like you're trying to impress me, spending all this money. I'm not trying to buy you, Eric, if that's what you're implying. Okay, maybe a little. You know what, Sandy? You're not a boyfriend. You're the poor guy. Um, this isn't working out for me. I'm going to go with you. I'll go with you. No, Sandy. I have to be by myself. We will be careful. Those decks, they get slippery. And hey, I, I got those tickets for Lava Land next week. Saturday matinee!
That didn't go too well, did it? Who were you? Did you hear us? Everything? Of course. Every word. Well, maybe you shouldn't eavesdrop on people's conversations. Sound carries. So, Xander, <coughs> you care a lot about this Eric, don't you? I adore Eric. But there's <coughs> not much in common. I thought there was. Not that it's any of your business, but is it love enough? Only in opera. And in opera, most lovers die off at the end anyway. <laughs> the few with happy endings. Oh, no, don't. Marriage to Figaro. You don't see all the arguments about who takes out the garbage or who changes the kids' diapers. You know a lot about opera. Who are you anyway? <laughs> oh my god! Do you live on Staten Island too? No. Um, I pass by a few times, but mainly I travel the seven seasons. With a break every seven years in search of my faithful companion who would release me from my curse. But how did you get on the ferries? We didn't see anybody else. My crew bound my ship to yours using graphic hooks, just as in the opera. I don't see any. It's weightless, invisible, except me to you. This doesn't make any sense. Okay, opera's over. You jump into the sea with Zenta in your arms. The curse is lifted. Curtain calls, standing ovation. Uh, the audience finally gets to pee, and then they all go home. Brooklyn, Jersey, Long Beach, whatever. It didn't work out with Zenta. Your buddy was right. Total not peace. So I took her back to her father. She married her, Eric. And I've been sailing another 200 years looking for someone else. Well, I know it's hard finding someone, especially in New York. Everybody's so fake. Taught everywhere. There was Ascension, Singapore, 1915. Or Nima, Mumbai, 1979. Both got cold feet. It's always the same. I'd really love to help, but uh, I tell them, life is not all it's cracked up to be, but I'm going to buy it. So you've been doing this every seven years. How long? I can't remember at this point. I'm almost nearly 500 years old, so there might be some dementia. <laughs> so what do you do with yourself? I read Marcel Proust, <laughs> work out. Crossword puzzles, surf the net. <laughs> no one to talk to, very bold. Well, okay, the earth is 70% water, but once you've seen one ocean, you've seen them all. <laughs> it's so sad. You know, they say loneliness is one of the biggest health problems for the elderly. You know, honestly, I really wish I could help, but other than chiding on the point. Well, actually, you can. You know the story. Well, <laughs> I don't think so. What, what happened to a beautiful dream to save our souls and pain? Uh, just an expression. But besides, you're supposed to find a wife, not that gay theater nature. So. The generals are becoming more fluid. Yeah, I really can't. I, I gotta go to work tomorrow. What is it? Well, what if I give you a kiss and you turn into a handsome prince? Wrong story. Okay, look, <laughs> I'm sure you're a nice guy at all, but to be honest, you're not really my type. There's a big age difference. You need a haircut and your breath stinks. <laughs> You sail the seven seas 400 years when you can't shower or shave or even brush your teeth. 23, I was pretty hot too. You mean I should sacrifice myself for some operatic character I don't even know? They jump off the ferry into the New York Bay? Must I spell everything out? What's in it for me? You millennials. Always me, me, me. <laughs> Never once thinking about anyone else. But just think. The satisfaction of performing a good deed. So, as you're falling off the ferry ten minutes from now to a cold, dark, watery death, imagine that a momentary beam of glory on your face. No! That you redeemed a tormented soul. I think of myself as a pretty generous person. And I give the charity, even though I can't itemize. I didn't give a buck to the guys on the subway. But you're asking for a lot. And I know you've got it rough, but I'm sorry. I have to turn you down. 
then I guess I have no choice to sail another seven years till I can try again. Doesn't sound so bad. You have job security, I get to keep my life. I'm going for both. You know, for someone who goes to the Met a dozen times a year and practically lives for Wagner and Puccini, the shallowness of your reasoning totally escapes me. But Sandra, all I'm asking is for you to take your rightful part in my opera so I can wrap up this third act, ring down that great gold curtain, and stop sailing this lousy ocean. This isn't opera anymore, it's reality. What's the difference? I want to be with Eric. But he doesn't want to be with you. And I don't believe that. But what about my third act? Xander, you win. Xander, you've been to Columbia. Xander, he has carved that. No, what? But who are you, Xander? We come from the same world. Romance. Fantasy. <laughs> the fountain that finally can sense <laughs> Five great arches of the Met. The red velvet staircases. The snooty ushers. The ten dollar coats. Which shall mean the axe. A crystal chandelier. Rising up to the gold-plated ceiling to dim the house lights. Well, how do you know this? I just spent two and a half hours on stage. <laughs> You're a ghost. Ghost, vampire, spirit, zombie, poltergeist, alive, dead. All these labels. Who is truly alive? Who is dead? I'm sorry. <laughs> you and your sorries. You, with at least 80 years to live. No idea what my life is like. Especially because I'm not alive. <laughs> Condemned for eternity to sail the seas of a one little slip. No one gives a damn. No one has the decency to say, enough, give the poor schmuck a break. <laughs> Wait, can I ask you something? <laughs> There's just one thing I never understood about the story. Xander. You're not supposed to understand the story. It's opera. I know. <laughs> but what was the curse all about? <laughs> well, everybody does that. I got caught. Oh. Oh. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's so unfair. Can I make you a hug? You can try, but I warn you, I am incorporeal. I don't care. I just promise me one thing. You'll never give up on your dreams. Okay, there's somebody out there for everyone. It just may take another 600 years. <laughs> what the? Eric! Eric! Uh, here I was thinking you were Mr. Faithful, and I turned my back for five minutes. And find you here with somebody else, sir. You dumped me. That doesn't mean you get with another guy two minutes later, especially old enough to be a great grandfather. Well, maybe I like older men. No, it's all right. I get it. Look at me. I'm ancient, unkept, ugly. <laughs> but I am a human being. And he's still my ex. Sir, it's not what it looks like. This is the flying Dutchman. Oh, Jesus Christ. Two hours on stage wasn't enough. I love you. Clearly. That's why you're all over Mr. Flying Grandpa here. You know what, Santa? That's it. When we dock in St. George, you can drive your cell phone and get a cab. I don't care. Then no texts, no calls, no emails. And then when I get home, I'm deleting all your messages and unfriending you from Facebook. Sounds <laughs> extreme. Stay out of this! <laughs> but what about our selfies from Cedar Grove Beach? I'll say it too. But I took 87! <laughs>
Xander, what are you doing? I'm killing myself because you don't want me anymore. You would kill yourself over me. But not just you. For ghosts, I'm not going to be. Sandy, you moron, get down from there. That's the finale for the Flying Dutchman, and I'm going to save his soul. You are beyond weird. No, no, no. A rope, self sacrificing. We are married. We are. Okay, you win. Okay. Five minutes to midnight. One, two, two and a half. Hold up. You said do it. Don't even think about it. No. Wait. Music. It's now in a major key. <laughs> look, the rain has stopped. The moon's really bright tonight. So does this mean, uh, apparently, it was enough that you were truly willing to sacrifice yourself? I never understood that part of the story before. I never understood any of this. <laughs> well, I don't have to jump into the harbor. But then we found out in time. Yeah, <laughs> really? <laughs> Listen to the music. Ebbing. Swelling. Isn't it magnificent? The opera is coming to an end. My lip. Ha, ha, ha. 